So, I've been living in France for almost a year now, studying art and trying to get a feel for European life. You know, the whole find yourself tour that most 20 year olds swear by? That's me. It's been fun, enlightening, and downright educational at times. But nothing could have prepared me for the most surreal night of my life. Buckle up, folks. This isn't a story about a haunted French chateau or eerie sounds in the night. It's way more chilling and, quite frankly, still makes my blood run cold. The French countryside is beautiful, think of endless vineyards, picturesque hamlets, and genuine bonhomie. I thought I'd found the same when I met Paul at a local wine tasting event. He was charming, spoke fluent English with that endearing French accent, and seemed genuinely interested in my Japanese heritage. Our conversations flowed effortlessly, from art, life in France, to our shared love for wine. As the evening progressed, he invited me over to his place, mentioning his personal collection of fine French wines. Honestly, he didn't give off any creepy vibes. But life's funny that way. The most terrifying things sometimes come packaged as harmless, ordinary events. Paul's house was nestled amidst the vineyards, slightly isolated but charming. A cozy little cottage that was a delightful fusion of French architecture and modern design. The evening was pleasant, more wine, laughter, and music. I remember thinking how lucky I was to experience such genuine hospitality. As the night wore on, the wine began to make me feel drowsy. Paul suggested I crash at his place, and in my slightly tipsy state, I agreed. He showed me to the guest room, and I decided to freshen up in the bathroom first. As I was in the bathroom, when I turned the water off, a peculiar sound pricked my ears. The distinct noise of plastic being spread out. I shrugged it off, thinking maybe Paul was just being a good host and setting up breakfast for tomorrow. Or maybe unpacking a blanket for me or something. But then, the humming started. Not a cheerful tune but something dark, sinister, and unfamiliar. My gut clenched. Something was off. Then there was this faint, muffled metal sound, like the unsettling clink and scrape of heavy instruments being sorted in a toolbox. Curiosity often kills the cat, but in my case, it might have saved me. I cracked open the bathroom door ever so slightly. The sight that met my eyes was nothing short of a scene from a horror movie. Paul was meticulously laying out an array of sharp tools on the plastic sheet. Knives, pliers, what looked like a bone saw, tools that had no business being in a living room. The cold precision in his movements and that incessant humming sent shivers down my spine. Panicking, I quickly shut the door, locking it. My heart raced, each beat echoing the gravity of my situation. I had left my purse, passport, everything in the guest room. But thankfully, my phone was in my back pocket. The silver lining in an otherwise dire situation. Dialing the police, I whispered my whereabouts, trying to convey the urgency without alerting Paul. Minutes felt like hours. I could still hear him, prepping. For what? I didn't want to find out. Then, the inevitable knock. Sayuri? Is everything okay? His voice, once warm and inviting, now echoed with a chilling detachment. I steeled myself, knowing I needed to buy time. Just a moment, Paul. Not feeling well. I replied, trying to keep my voice steady. Silence. Followed by more knocking more insistent this time. Then, the sweetest sound I've ever heard, distant sirens. They grew louder, closer. Paul must have heard them too. The humming stopped. The shuffling of feet. A door slamming. By the time the police broke down the door, Paul was gone. The chilling array of tools was there, silently testifying my impending doom. The police whisked me away, and a manhunt for Paul began. Later, I learned that Paul wasn't his real name. 
He was wanted in several countries, leaving behind a trail of unsolved disappearances and suspected foul play. The lesson here? Always trust your gut, especially when you're in unfamiliar territory. Looks can be deceiving, and danger doesn't always present itself with a neon sign. Oh, and if you're in France and someone named Paul offers you a glass of wine in his isolated home, maybe just say non, merci.